I make stuff easier. I make the projects easier for them. Yeah. And that's why we're, okay, let's bring Mustafa here. Let's bring him here. Because uh, they want to focus on getting uh, the direction right and mm -hmm. the, the, the shot and the story. Yeah. Welcome to another exciting episode of Style Speaks. I'm your host, Mo Adams, and today we're at Urban Lot in the heart of Riyadh. Joining us today is someone who's at the forefront of elevating Saudi style, fashion and brand producer, Mustafa El Masi. What's going on, brother? How you been? Good, good. It's How are you? Pleasure to have you on Style Speaks. Thank so, you, thank you, thank you for the on. invitation. See, today the, the roles have reversed, you know? Yeah. yeah. Not behind the scenes, but more so on camera. It's yeah. time to shine. Ready? Thank so you. let's get into it, bro. Let's go. So Mustafa, before we really dive into your more so creative time in the industry, I want to take it all the way back. And know more so about your educational background. Were there any moments that kind of shaped your, your interest in the kind of fashion, entertainment as a whole? As for educational background, I don't think it's uh, related. Um, I have a bachelor degree uh, in management information systems from King Fahad University, yeah. the best university in Saudi. There you go, plug the uh, <laughs> And then I pursued higher education in Canada, so yeah. I did my master's in business yeah. administration, um, specialized in project management. So in terms of relating that to fashion, the only thing that I think it's relatable is the skill set that I got mm -hmm. from managing projects. Yeah. And uh, it's simply the same thing. It's uh, these projects are unique. They have uh, deliverables. They need planning. They need uh, understanding the scope yeah. and then the team required the the resources and making sure it's executed so that's how i think mm. it's related to fashion because yeah. at some point you need all these things to happen but uh, i guess the transition from also logistics to, to fashion now is uh it's, it's a it's a major one right so what really inspired you to, to kind of pursue this and do it alongside of what you do of course um I've always been fond of uh, arts mm. in general. So I love music, I love movies. And lately, uh, there has been lots of opportunities in the entertainment industry here in Definitely. Saudi. And one niche that I've found that nobody's looking at was fashion at the time. So I started like three years ago. And right before COVID, they're, they're starting to tell stories about Saudi and it became like uh, a place, a place, like a hub or a place to to focus on. Yeah. yeah. So, lots of clients from outside the region, from GCC, I would say, they wanted to shoot in locations in Saudi. Mm -hmm. They they lack the expertise to get in uh, to the country and get all the permits and everything that's related to execute uh, a photo shoot here. Yeah. And uh, and also at the time when COVID started, uh, there was the, you know, the flight ban, like we couldn't fly people from Dubai. And uh, I took an advantage of that uh, uh, issue <laughs> happening and made it work for me where I was the local producer on the ground, uh, making sure the client uh, uh, and what he needs is, yeah. uh, is delivered, contacting the people, getting the the location and making sure it's suitable for the yeah. photo shoot. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you kind of also manage your time to be able to, to handle both things at once? Is there like a any factor that view that feels like if you really focus on one, it could be more than the other or anything like that? What about the transition to some also the creative industry full time? Has that ever crossed your mind into kind of like, balancing two things at once? Yeah. So you mean like I have a full time job that's not exactly. Very, yeah. Yes. So yes. Um, uh, it's hard. It's hard to uh, do the transition. Yeah. Um, I have a full-time job at a defense uh, yep. company here in Saudi. I'm very happy with them. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I've been, I've been, uh, I'm a success story in that, yeah. in, in that company because yeah. uh, they had this uh, contract with the Saudi government and and it's still going. Yeah. And I've been uh, moving up the ladder in the last nine years with yeah. them uh, I would say I'm in an I'm ma area manager position right now which I started from the bottom and now yeah now we're here nice but you, you entered the the industry also in like 2020 when it was still emerging you know not really a, 
the stage of where it is today. Were there any like opportunities or, or challenges that you really faced um, at the start? Um, at the start, yes. Uh, everything was not clear to everyone mm. how, how, how it's done, what it's allowed, what it's not. Uh, the regulations are still in ongoing on how to enable uh, artists to yeah. do what they want to do. Yeah. And, and it's, it's been a, a journey with, uh, with how, how, how it's evolving here in Saudi. Um, I guess one of the challenges I want to say that affected me is my own uh, uh, acceptance and uh, my own, uh, oh, how do I say it? It's that I'm dealing with this uh, change, uh, that drastic change, yeah. uh, suddenly, and I'm still like, um, my mindset is still in, in, in <laughs> before. Back there still. <laughs> yeah, back there still. So it was hard for me to understand uh, all this and make sure everything is appropriate and everything that is happening is is respectful yeah. to all the parties involved. Yeah. So it was a challenge for me to you know navigate that space yeah. for myself definitely i would agree there's the changes that are, that are happening in, in saudi and everything there's so much in such a short space of time you would even think yeah um but i want to say no one really forgets their first do you remember your first real big project that you were a part of whether it was in a fashion scene music i know you do a little bit of a little, little bit of everything so is there one that you can kind of particularly call on as as your first one um my first like i would i would call my first project was a success story because I was involved with the amazing Hayat Usama. Nice. Uh, she was, uh, the photo shoot was a cover shoot for El Arabia and it uh, was uh, Tam Tam, mm -hmm. who was a Saudi singer, was on the cover. So for me to be involved suddenly uh, in such a project was, uh, was a great eye opener. Yeah. So that's one memorable yeah, one. Out. Now I want, I want to dive into a bit of your creative process. When kind of being presented with a, an interesting project, uh, where do you typically start? You know, more so from, from the idea to uh, more so the, the yeah. concept generation to the actionable plans. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that kind of go into it. So can you talk us through how maybe you would work from the moment you receive the idea to yeah. it actually come into fruition? So usually the ideas are already given to me in a boot board from the client. So uh, my, uh, my process is to understand the, the, uh, the mood and then uh, try to figure out who is the best team yes. uh, that could pull, out, pull this off, pull this look, pull this uh, direction from the client. So um, I'm not usually involved in the beginning of the, the process where they create the idea or the story. It, it usually comes later on. My, mm -hmm. my role comes in later on when I tr try to help them execute this uh, idea. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, high profile projects, um, scrolling through your IG, there's always one, one picture, and I yeah. think it's a pin post maybe. Yeah. Uh, you shoot with Georgina, man. Tell us about that experience. Yes. How was that? Yeah. So I got the message, a go. WhatsApp message saying, we need the producer. We have this high end fashion shoot, cover shoot for. A magazine and we need help on the ground yeah uh, I was happy that I was uh, um, recommended by two people who I never worked with uh, uh, one of them like we reach a dead end in one of the projects that we were working on uh, like we did the scouting we did everything like when it comes to one point uh, there was uh, disagreements mm -hmm. and then it was professional enough saying, okay, we cannot continue this project. But that same person provided my contact to the, to the magazine and they contacted me. So I'm thankful to everyone yeah. I'm in contact with, even though that sometimes we don't work together or it doesn't work for us. Yeah, there's so, always disagreements in anything. Yes, like that. So, but um, high end, right? like, yeah. really like it was exciting. Uh, Georgine itself, she was really uh, cool. amazing. Uh, I would say maybe I would I couldn't communicate with her much uh, because she was involved and she was surrounded by her people, and I just kept her. Uh, uh, I make I made sure everything was good. Yeah. I actually talked to their her agent and uh, got also the Shazam because yeah, yeah, I usually yeah. do playlists for every shoot. Yeah. 
I try to curate the to mood. Uh, Spanish and music and that. Yeah, <laughs> so it's lots of Latina, Latino music uh, involved in that shoot. Ronaldo but, was at the crib, he was around or something? No. Or no? Her, uh, her kids came in kids. Uh, for a while, uh, but Junior stayed in there. the... Uh, nice. Uh, and uh, like, uh, I was lucky enough also to contact Mansard, uh, yeah. the Ratson uh, Hotel. Uh, they were really, really cooperative. So I'm, I'm really thankful when I have an opportunity to expand uh, my clientele, expand the locations that I can uh, shoot in. Um, That's so cool. it was, uh, yeah. it was smooth as sail. Yeah, I've noticed you collaborate with a lot of luxury brands, jewelry brands, and stuff like that. Um, I would say, what are some of the opportunities that they possess more so that other project projects don't? I don't know, like. Uh, for jewelry, it's really difficult. Uh, uh, it's, it's really difficult to yeah. like bring a story that focuses on the jewelry and has a has a life. Fashion is, uh, I would say, fashion has more life into it. Yeah, jewelry is more static, more clean. Yeah, just makeup, no makeup. Much easier. Focus to on the yeah. on the item. The yeah. the so it's uh, the reflection is is perfect. So. Um, they're not my favorite type of client, but they are necessary <laughs> for my survival. So there you go. They, uh, they pay yeah. well. Basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you, you've accomplished a lot. You know, is it fifty projects in two years, mashallah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. You know, what would you put that you know rapid growth down to? You know, I'm sure. 50 I guess projects. there's a there's this need there's this need for yeah. people to help out execute projects. In the end, uh, like before well, you have I to before be good, you know to get. 15 two years it's, it's not a case of just a lack of need you know it's true uh before i like this producer job comes in like usually the photographer does everything or the stylist uh does everything construct the team get the location get the everything that's required for the mm -hmm. shoot they will be worrying everything about everything especially like uh, usually when the photographer does it uh does the production uh it it uh i guess derails their energy and their focus on the uh, on getting uh, the great yeah. shot so I make stuff easier I make the projects easier for them yeah. and that's why we're okay let's bring Mustafa here let's bring him here because uh, they want to focus on getting uh, the direction right mm -hmm. and the the, the shot and the story yeah. and you have a production company in the works has it been launched yet yes Can you uh, tell us a little bit about that totem production yeah, yeah studio nice. so so, um, I started my like uh, the legal entity, the commercial registration. I, I did everything I need to mm. to capture business with uh, uh, local companies uh, because usually uh, they don't hire directly the freelancers. Yeah. Uh, so I made this specifically specifically for bigger projects. So yeah. one, the first one that I was involved with was uh, Red Sea Film Festival. They had a Venice, uh, uh, a Venice uh, shoot. Like they, they wanted to shoot something in uh, Riyadh and show it uh, in uh, in Venice. So we did that. I couldn't do it as a fl like freelancer. I had to have a company, and it started from there. Uh, yeah. I'm, and it's still going. I'm still uh, uh, licensed and everything, just to capture more and more. Uh, Big things coming. Yes. Yeah. Love Hope it. so. I was gonna say, given the you know the more so the dynamic things coming at you, you know, last minute. I know you mentioned to me before, you know, the Tyson Fury shoot that came about. Yeah. Do you think there needs to be a, you know, the industry needs to be better in terms of structure? You think sometimes it's just kind of things thrown at you last minute, and in your case, having another full time job to yeah. So obviously, keep in mind, it's uh, kind of takes you away from opportunities at times. Well, we can't control the market. We can't control. Uh, what's going on even if we plan mm -hmm. there's still things happening suddenly yeah. that Advanced I need one. to react to yeah. it and there's these opportunities that comes in and goes um, one of the things that, for example jewelry uh, yeah. jewelry came into Riyadh for a show like showcasing the jewelry and then Vogue Arabia was like can we shoot it yeah. it's like okay yes let's bring the model let's bring the photo photographer let's bring everyone and in two three days Done. We had the team ready yeah. to just before the, the 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 actual items fly back to US. So some expensive stuff or some mm. really important people uh, would come in for a 
specific period of time, you don't know if they uh, are willing to stay or are willing to mm -hmm. do any photo shoots. So some uh, yeah. clients will grab this opportunity and uh, create something out of it. So. Yeah, and in terms of like Saudi fashion, what are your, your thoughts on the industry as a whole? You know, what opportunities do you see? What obstacles do you see? What do you think can be, you know, done better in terms of, you know, the content quality or even the, the, the industry stability as a whole, you know? Because it's still somewhat new. We've just had Fashion Week. There's a lot happening. Do you think it's, uh, you know, what opportunities and obstacles do you really see in terms of the industry as a whole? So as an industry, still, uh, as I think the building the infrastructure, there yeah. are, uh, there's, it takes a long time to, yeah. to uh, make sure it's stable. Um, there's still, I think, lots of opportunities when it comes to supply chain, yeah. when it comes to uh, labor and the artisans. Yeah. and making sure that they have um, the quality and the education to to create uh, great pieces so there's lots lots to do uh, but lots of, again lots of opportunity in terms of the content um, uh, we are still experiencing uh, this growth yeah and the, the creatives uh, are, are, are are just gaining more and more experiences too, yeah. from from all these projects that's, that are happening so I, I believe like it takes it, it takes some time to to reach a level that uh, yeah. is it's a standard I would say definitely and for yourself you know what are some of your goals aspirations things you things you want to accomplish in the next few years milestones you want to hit whether it's you personally the production company as a whole well like one of the biggest goals that I have is um, exporting more content yeah for me I, I enjoy working with entities outside of Saudi Arabia yeah. and getting them to understand our culture understand our limitations and usually like they have uh, the wrong aspects aspects uh, or stereotypes of uh, our region and uh, mm -hmm. and with all this growth it's not even documented yet like to them Still the if they read yeah. any book about Riyadh it's just it's already outdated so yeah. even if it's last year yeah. um, so I want to help educate them and uh, make sure that they understand there's lots of opportunity here and just export uh, from my side more content uh -huh. that they are uh, okay with and they understand that we can do it as well. Like we have lots of creatives yeah. that are very talented, yeah. but they're not given a chance because it's risky to them. Um, I'm trying to push, uh, but I can only push so hard. Uh, For sure. Yeah. I think as times, you know, things will, will start to make sense. Opportunities will keep coming. And like you said, the, the industry will, will shift in our direction. But, you know, yeah. stuff for the final you know, part of the show, we always like to go through a styling segment. Sure. Um, we got to learn about you. Now it's time to learn yeah. about your styling. So let's get into let's it. Let's go. So Mustafa, we're about to turn you to a, to a stylist. I know you're always behind the scenes, but um, style speaks is no exception. All right. And we're here at Urban Lot. We have a very cool, you know, collection of, of local and international streetwear. So let's yeah. get into it. Where do you want to start? Anywhere specific? Let's, let's walk around. Let's, let's walk, walk around, around and see go. what's here. So Mustafa, these are your choices. You want to talk us through them? Yes. So Turbo Studio, yep. uh, Saudi brand. Uh, I love them. I love what they're doing and uh, uh, I'm a big fan. I think you can see that they have uh, this grungy yeah. identity with them. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing fabrics, amazing stitching. Yeah. Uh, I love the jacket. Uh, I think it's Middle Beast vibes. I don't know. Like you said, I'm getting yeah. ready, man. We're getting warmed up. Yeah. Middle Beast. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Let me try it on and we'll see how it turns out. Oh my God. What are you saying? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It looks like amazing, it? man. Listen, listen. For me, three out try of ten. Three out of ten. Eight out of ten. Really? I've not quite made the transition to, to the skirt, so let me know. But hey, he, I told him to be a stylist today and he just went all out. Check ready, out. ready for Middle Beast. I what think are we saying? Are. Guys, let me know what you think of the fit. For me, um, maybe not, not right now, to be honest. I think I'll, st I'll stick to it like, like this. Guys, and that's a wrap for today's episode. Mustafa, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank Any you. Any words for upcoming producers? Producers, uh, be consistent. Try to learn more. Try to be more creative. 
and uh, just push the limits. Definitely. We well, hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you next time on Style Speaks. Thank you. We had an amazing time exploring the fascinating world of fashion and can't wait to bring you more exciting content in the future episodes. Don't forget to tune in next time for more insightful interviews, exclusive insights, and all the latest news from the world of fashion. Thank you for joining us on Style Speaks, where fashion truly speaks for itself.